time today? I have a discovery suit coming up on that Rafael matter this week. Who's the judge? Ferris. I can get a good over for next week. I need all the help I can get on this one. All right. What's Ross Valley doing here? He's prosecuting. Oh. Hello, Sam. Hi. Uh, Mr. Tyler? Uh, Mr. Tyler, your enterprises must be involved in over $5 million worth of low-cost housing here in the San Francisco area. Closer to $7 million, uh, Mr. Uh... Uh, Williams, uh, Ben Williams. Mr. Williams, press? Yes, that's right. Nice to meet you. Would you care to comment how it feels to be directly involved in the uh, biggest housing scandal that's ever hit San Francisco area? There is no housing scandal, Ben. I've just been called into this case, Fred. Have you got an office? Sure, as soon as I get in process. OK, look straight ahead. All it. Well, having criticized my definition, Sam, what would you call it? Due process will define it, Ben. The only fact we're certain of right now is that my client's been indicted. Well, that's not much meat for my hungry readers, Sam. It'll have to do. OK, Sam. Arraignment. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Department 64, Judge Baker's court. Uh-huh. OK, hold it. OK, he's all yours, Sam. All right, come on. Hello, Mr. Tyler. We can talk in here. This is my associate, Mr. Tabor. How do you do? Mr. Tabor? Hold, Mr. Tyler. Anybody want to buy a good house cheap? Low down payment to a qualified buyer? <laughs> <laughs> Sit right over there, Mr. Tyler. Thank you. From now on, let me do all the talking to the press, Mr. Tyler. I talk too much, huh? You do. Oh. Can I ask a question? Anything you want. We don't know each other. You got a reputation for picking your clients very carefully. Yet, 20 minutes after my call, you're here acting on my behalf. Why? Maybe I like the sound of your name. The important thing is, do you want me to represent you? Trudy, prepare a petition against the district attorney and joining him from seizing any and all books, ledgers, papers, accounts from Tyler Enterprises and so forth. Say it back. We need time to see the figures while we prepare the defense. Good, I'll need it in 30 minutes. Well, I don't need any time. I'm in. You're my boys. What's your name again? Henry Tabor. Right now, we're not evaluating anything except that you're booked on grand theft. What's the story? That's the story. You're now representing a multi-million dollar thief. Big figures, huh? I think you can get rid of them in half an hour. I can try. Trudy, one at a time. Yes, Mr. Taylor. Oh, no. Talk to Whitaker later. No. How long has Mrs. Tyler been here? Half an hour. Appointment? No. Oh. No. Hold the course, Trudy. Sam. It's a good word, hello, isn't it? Honest. Isn't that the way it always was? People can't always pick up where they left off. Though you just proved you can. As you proved it three years ago when Billy died. Oh, I... I did write and thank you for your donation to the Memorial Scholarship Fund. You did. It's very thoughtful of you, Sam. So was your letter. Even the wild seagulls flying over the bay must be weeping for you now. You didn't come here to talk about that, did you? No. I want you to get me a divorce, Sam. Well, you do handle divorce cases, don't you? Even for someone you haven't seen for 15 years. Where have you been the last 24 hours? Carmel. Alone? Yes, alone. And you don't know about this. <sighs> Mr. 
just makes my little problem even littler, doesn't it? Thanks, Anne, for knowing I hadn't heard about it before I came here. Just, what has he done? I don't know. I do know he's accused of misappropriating funds, taking money paid into a trust fund for home buyers and employing it for his personal use. In other words, stealing. Uh, is he in jail now? Yes. The judge will set bail and name a trial date at an arraignment tomorrow. And a loving, dutiful wife would be there, wouldn't she? To hold his hand, wipe his nose, forget the reason she came here. Oh, Sam, we hurt you enough once. Don't let us come into your life again. Hmm. I'll be digging rather deeply into yours in the next few weeks. Well, I know all sorts of questions about receipts, disbursements, contracts, corporations. Where do you find the answer to the big question? Who weeps for the empty hearted? Garfield Winner 713. Oh, just a moment, please. It's Mr. Whitaker. It's the second time he's called. Tell Mr. Whitaker I'll get him third time around. I'm sorry, Mr. Whitaker. Mr. Benedict's in conference right now. I talked to yes. Chris. I told him we'd want a complete audit on Tyler's books by Monday. This is the petition for injunction. I thought I'd run out to one of Tyler's housing developments. There's a new one being built out here at uh, Mystic Point. I'd like to talk to those people, see what they think of Tyler's operations, their homes. Maybe I could find a friendly witness. He could use them. What about her? Mrs. Tyler. Is she friendly or unfriendly? What? I don't know. Sam? Sam, I have to talk to you. No, you don't, Fred. You talk to him. Now, wait a minute. Sam, the Internal Revenue. The Internal Revenue Department has already admitted an overpayment, Mr. Small. Is that true? That's true. Hey, how much? Ask him. $220,000. It is? It is. And it's a refund of $80,000 more than you estimated. I like this boy very much, Sam. <laughs> I have faith in him. So have I. Go on in there and talk to him. Where will you be? Oh, uh, I don't know. I may spend some time with the seagulls. The people of the state of California against Gregory J. Tyler in the Superior Court of California in and for the city and county of San Francisco. The grand jury of the city and county of San Francisco hereby accuses you, Gregory J. Tyler, of a felony, to wit, grand theft in 68 separate and distinct counts. Mr. Clerk, arraign the defendant. Here's a copy of the indictment. Count one. In that within a period of 10 months next preceding the date hereof in the city and county of San Francisco, state of California, he, the said Gregory J. Tyler, fraudulently appropriated the sum of $914 entrusted to him by one Walter C. Powell. Your Honor, we waive further reading of the indictment. Is your true name Gregory J. Tyler? Yes. Is the defendant ready to plead? He is, Your Honor. How do you plead, Mr. Tyler? I plead not guilty on every count. The record will show that the defendant pleads not guilty to each and every count of the indictment, 1 through 68 inclusive. I believe this is a matter which should be brought to trial with dispatch. Unless counsel has sufficient legal grounds for objecting to such date, I will set the trial for four weeks from today. Are there any objections? There being no objections, this matter is set for trial four weeks from today in Department 64, 10 a.m. Are there any other matters in connection with this case that should be brought to the court's attention at this time? Yes, Your Honor. The bail fixed on the warrant of arrest is $125,000. I'm certain the court will agree there have been comparatively few cases in the courts of this state where bail has been set at such a high figure. Since the purpose of bail is to secure the appearance of the defendant at the trial, the fact that the defendant has never before been charged with a crime, and that he has lived here many years with all his roots in San Francisco, and that he has brought honor to our city, county, and state through many awards, national and international, presented to him in his chosen profession. I object, Your Honor. How long the defendant has lived here or how many awards he may have received are not germane. 
No trial is going on here, Mr. Ross Valley. Mr. Tabor is merely presenting argument. Of course, Mr. Tabor, there's no jury present. Continue. The defendant is not being charged with a crime of violence, Your Honor, where it might be dangerous to others to allow him freedom pending trial. And there is nothing in his past to warrant the assumption that he would not appear. I therefore suggest that this bail is unreasonable and excessive. The people resist any application to reduce the amount of bail. We believe that the amount of bail should bear a reasonable relationship to the amount of theft. Your Honor, the prosecutor is being a bit premature. There has been no theft as of this time. And to the best of my recollection, the defendant entered a plea of not guilty. Until he is convicted beyond a reasonable doubt and to a moral certainty, the law presumes him to be innocent. Mr. Tabor, it seems an anomaly in this day and age that defendants who are charged with crimes of violence seldom jump bail. On the other hand, men who have misappropriated large sums of money seem to have a common aim, to take long and indefinite vacations in distant places. The motion to reduce bail is denied. This court will now recess for 10 minutes. Well, what now? Well, I'll have bail posted by noon. Then we'll have lunch and go back to your office. Well, where's uh, Samuel the Eminent? He's in another court today. Oh, and by the way, he's expecting you in your office at 1 o'clock. Is that so? That time we found out what we were really up against. Well, I'm afraid I can't make it, friend. Previous engagement and all that. If you want to stay out of jail, Mr. Tyler, your engagements with us had better take precedence. Oh, they will. But we'll have to delay this one until 6.30. Tell uh, Samuel my house, cocktails, dinner, then if nobody gets too smashed, we can kick around a few indictments. Oh, and uh, tell Samuel if uh, this leaves him at loose ends this afternoon, he might try holding hands with my wife. I'm sure she can find time for that. Be it ever so humble. <laughs> Home is where the heart is. Charity begins at. Far from the old folks and where the buffalo roam. It is to crime. Let's go. Well, we might as well relax, Sam. There's no telling when the Lord and Master will show up, if at all. Meantime, why don't you cross-examine me about indictments, divorces, cabbages, kings? What'll it be, Sam? Why did I suddenly seek you out after 15 years? Why do I want a divorce? Am I a thief, too, along with my husband? What? You weren't at the arraignment this morning. No, I wasn't. And I wasn't at the hotel in Palm Springs, the hostelry at Vegas, or the motel at the Hyatt. But I'll bet you he was. I give you Gregory J. Tyler, playboy of the Western world. Ever sign any documents of any kind involving Tyler Enterprises Incorporated? Well, now that's an emotionally charged question for such a touching reunion. Did you? No. Ever act in any way in behalf of Tyler Enterprises as employee, stockholder, officer, interested party? No. Ever receive any compensation of any kind from them, directly or indirectly, salary, dividends, gifts, loans? No, 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 and no. Question period over now, Sam. One thing more. Since you reneged on the divorce action yesterday, you are no longer my client. But that's only temporary. You see, I like to wait until the ship is sunk before I desert. The ship won't sink, doll. Not as long as Skipper Sam Benedict's at the helm. Come on in, Louise. How goes the sweets? How are you, Louise? Just fine, thanks, Mr. Tyler. He should be fine. He just pissed a two-hip shot out today. Oh, uh, Louise, it's Mr. Benedict, Mr. Benedict, Mr. Alvarez. Samuel? No, thank you. Glad to know you, Louise. Me too, Mr. Benedict. Hey, uh, Ruthie, Louise's mother has to work late tonight. Uh, how about you uh, rustling up some chow for the two of you while uh, Sammy and I bump heads? But I thought you invited everybody here to dinner. Well, I did, but uh, I, I got to bow out. I have a meeting with the uh, Santa Barbara Syndicate about putting in some new developments. See you at the ball game, buddy. You bet, Mr. Tyler. Coming? Be right with you. Mr. Tyler told me what a great guy you are. Is that so? You will get things straightened out, huh? Well, I'll do my best, Louise. 
He's a swell guy, Mr. Ty Lewis. Would you like to wash up now, Louise? You know where it is, don't you? Sure. Nice to meet you, Mr. Benedict. Right. Tell me about him. Gregory Tyler may not be a good husband, but you've got to admit he's quite a stinker, isn't he? Tell me about Luis. Oh. Well, Billy might have pitched a two-hitter today if he'd lived. You see, he'd be about the same age, Sam. Yeah. Nice kid, that, Louise. Has the makings of a fine pitcher. You have the makings of a fine jailbird. Oh, what's eating you, Samuel? You know I had a previous engagement today. I'm Luis Alvarez's big brother. You're also my client, who faces a big fat rap on grand theft, unless he does something to help me. OK, I will. I've uh, got some documents that should make us odds-on favorites for an acquittal. Uh, try the uh, top drawer on the desk. File those where they'll do the most good, you know, judges, jurors, district attorneys. It's your business, you know what to do. Everybody loves money. The only place I'd file these is down your throat. Samuel, that sounds a lot like uh, holier than thou. Don't tell me that your hands are any cleaner than these. Not with all the crooks and murderers you set free. I'm not going to tell you anything. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute, Samuel, wait a minute. I, I might have gone too far this time. This time? No, no, look, I, I'm afraid I, I just uh, don't have too many ideals. I, I'm like the average guy. I, I'm tired and I'm scared most of the time, and a tired and scared man uh, can't afford to have ideals. Look, look, Samuel, this world we live in is full of ideals, but they don't work. The only thing that does work is money. You're wrong about the average man and money. Well, I'm, I'm a lot closer to money, Samuel. In large quantities, it has a life of its own, a personality, really, that's very difficult to control. These hands and a pick and shovel started Tyler Enterprises, made me the biggest builder in San Francisco, and uh, no glory-seeking district attorney with a fistful of phony charges is gonna take away what I spent 15 years to build. You are a liar. Your father-in-law gave you your first job as a salesman. When you went into building, he co-signed a quarter of a million dollars worth of notes so you could start your first tract. The hardest work you've done in the last 15 years is to signal the waiter for another martini. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Samuel. OK. You uh, called my bluff, queered my document deal. Will you still represent me? It's up to you. I promise I'll uh, be a good boy and keep my nose clean. Redeposit that in the same account you got it from, and I want to see the duplicate deposit slips. Okay. From now on, everything you tell me is to be the truth. Agreed. When we get the results of the audit, we'll go over them together. Maybe by the time we get to trial, I'll know 50% as much about your operations as the district attorney does. Well, I thought uh, you wanted to go over this tonight. Well, how can we? I'm taking your wife out to dinner. Tabor. I'm Mr. Benedict's associate. Well, what's the matter? Oh, I just wondered what the man was like who's responsible for the apiary going on inside. Apiary? Mm -hmm. That busy, buzzing beehive of auditors and accountants going up in Mr. Tyler's books. Oh. Well, now you know. Any comments? Oh, I take a while to make up my mind. Often as long as, uh, 30 or 40 seconds. Is Mr. Tyler in? No, and he won't be. He wanted me to give this duplicate deposit slip to you or Mr. Benedict. Well, it seems Mr. Tyler's a man of his word. 
if you don't particularly care about the kind of word he uses. Now, he used some pretty choice ones about this. Oh, it looks like an intriguing development to me. What didn't he like? The timing. Notice he won an international award for it in Geneva. Came in while he was incarcerated. <laughs> what tract is this? Mystic Point. It's the unfinished one. It's probably his best design. Home's compact but free-flowing. Uh, privacy islands for everyone in your family and a uh, community park in the center of the development. You know, you sound very well informed. <laughs> About other things, too. Progressive jazz, little theater groups, where to find the best steak in town at uh, chain store prices. Stuff like that. You know, I might be skeptical enough to ask you to prove that. Uh, 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 uh. I might be sure enough to dare you to try. Tonight. Fun. Where was it? Dinner. VJ Day. Tony's? Sausalito? <laughs> oh, San Francisco looked like Times Square on New Year's Eve. No, it wasn't Sausalito. It was Tiburon. And we weren't having dinner at Tony's. We were just having a couple of drinks. And I was doing the driving. <laughs> of course. I was thinking of the night you won the wave in a crittle. You know, I think I got a little over-enthusiastic in my celebrating. <laughs> I guess we both did. Uh, what's the sense of it? Sense? What good is it? Trying to relive a lot of old memories. The past. We can't bring it back by talking about it. And we can't change today. We might make today a little easier to live with. Is that bad? I think it is. If it stops us from facing what we have to face, we're running away from where we are, from what we have to do today. What is it we have to do? Put Tiburon and Tony's and all the good times we had back in the attic where they belong. We lived and we loved. And it was good. Leave it alone, Ruth. Let it lie. Will it make us happier? I don't know. Maybe it will. But I'm a lawyer, not a psychiatrist. Your husband's in a jam, a big jam. I'm gonna need all the help I can get to defend him. Yes. I'm sorry, Sam. I thought you might be having dinner with me because... Three separate corporations, Marigold Acres, Elm Hill, and Mystic Point. And Tyler Enterprises acting in the capacity of agent and property manager for all three. All payments, loans, taxes, and purchase money funneling through Tyler. That's where you got into trouble. Yep. You broke about even on Marigold Acres. Elm Hill, you made money. All right. And Mystic Point's still under construction. You might call it that. What happened there? Rain. Did you ever see what mud can do to a construction project? Then a three-month industry strike. And all the time, the loan payments to make and the interest building up all the time. So I borrowed from Marigold Acres and then from Elm Hill. And finally, you started borrowing from the Internal Revenue Department. A perfect picture of an imperfect man and one beautiful Jan. You got a drink around here? Mystic Point was a separate corporation. You didn't have to involve the others. You could have sold it off and taken your loss. Lunch is served, gentlemen. Here you go. 
Trudy, that's a tuna fish salad sandwich. That's right. But I asked for a hot pastrami sandwich. Nick says it's bad for your ulcer. I don't have an ulcer. It's not Nick's diagnosis. He says as long as you're getting sandwiches from him, they're going to be tuna fish. Of course, I could suggest that he call in a stomach specialist for consultation. Perhaps a nice diet of uh, milk toast. All right, Mystic Point. You must have realized you didn't have to go on feeding money into that. Well, I was uh, feeding a memory and a promise. What does that mean? There's a little point up north in Sonoma County called Mystic Point. It was given to Ruth and me as a wedding present. After Billy was born, when he was old enough, we used to take him up there, you know, picnics and camping. He, he really loved the place. We talked of moving up there someday. I even designed what we called our dream house, and uh, Billy made me promise that I'd really build it. And then, after he died, we couldn't go up there anymore and sold the land. But I, I did try to keep the promise. Basic design of the homes in Mystic Point is the same as that dream house. Not much of a defense to offer in a court of law, huh? What about restitution, Mr. Tyler? <laughs> well, you've seen my audit. I'm going to hock up to my ears. Homes, cars, boat. Not a nickel's worth of equity anywhere. No, you've got yourself a client that has no business, no money, no assets, and uh, maybe not even a wife. And in three days, you've got to go in and defend him on 68 counts of grand theft, on all of which he's uh, plainly guilty. You know something? I'm beginning to think that uh, you're on a tougher spot than I am. time since you've honored me this way. Well, it's been a long time since I felt like coming in here. True. All very true. Greg, mm -hmm. I, I thought we might try to take a small faltering step in the right direction. Oh? Uh, which direction is that? Oh, please don't make it difficult. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, what is it? Well, the, the trial's tomorrow. <laughs> so they tell me. I, I thought we might celebrate. Have dinner? Yeah. As I remember the old Tyler custom, when uh, something important was imminent, we'd uh, always have a celebration the night before. And that way we wouldn't be disappointed if uh, things didn't work out too well. We'd always have the celebration, right? <laughs> That's the way it used to work, yes. We've never had one in this house, have we? No. I think it might work. I'd like to try. Cocktails? At six. Why don't we?
Well, Fred, what do you see? An unfinished housing development. Oh, now, wait a minute. Will you take another look? Come on. Sam, what am I supposed to see? A quarter of a million dollars, Mr. Small. You said you had faith in him. Uh-huh. Since when do you throw away that kind of money, Mr. Small? All you have to do is give me a certified check for a few bucks, and I'll put you in business. <laughs> and just how many bucks is a few? $173,622.43. How's that? You said you believed in him. Well, I do. Well, listen to the him. The projection of estimated profit is well in excess of a quarter million dollars, and the design for that track won an international award in Geneva. So why didn't they build it over there? I have all the facts and figures in my office. And he has a client by the name of Tyler who's in a lot of trouble. This could help him? True. True. Sam, isn't there a conflict of interest here? Oh, Fred, why don't you... You shut up. Now, listen. In my estimation, it's a very good investment, Mr. Small. Couldn't you at least come up with one unselfish argument? No. Well, Mr. Small? Joe, drive me back to Mr. Benedict's office. Garfield 10713. Hank, no date tonight. Why do you have to break it? I'm not going to break it. You are. Now, why would I do a ridiculous thing like that? When I came back down to the office to pick up some new hose I'd forgotten, well, a call just came in from International Airways. It seems that flight 7184 South America is now scheduled to depart on time. And a Mr. Bentley should hurry down to validate his ticket. Did Tyler ever use that name? Once in Santa Barbara that I know about. Thanks, Bev. I'll call you later. your father build his house? Billy boy, Billy boy. Did your father build his house? Charming Billy. Yes, your father built this house. But your father's such a louse. But you're a good boy. God bless this house and all who dwell therein. Your den. Yes. And living room? Not too large? But comfortable. 
fireplace. Right here. Where we'd all sit around laughing, feeling good. Because we have each other. We don't need anything else. Picture window. Right here. Overlooking the sea. Nice. Sleep, dream of another lovely day. <laughs> like the one just passed. where the footballs will be. Adventure books. Building sets. And dog. Yes, dog at the foot of the bed. And dreams. That could someday change the world. A man who will, who will gradually be born. Who will someday build a, a lovely, better house for someone. Get out of here, Mr. Bentley. Hmm? Oh, come on. Do you uh, always get so physical with your clients when they're trying to take a little trip? We're going to try on tomorrow, Mr. Tyler, and I don't think it's in your best interest to leave the country. Spoken like a fine, righteous attorney, but you're fired, and Sam Benedict is fired. And, oh, yes, your uh, sense of responsibility is fired, too. That case contains what I think it does, Mr. Tyler. You're in the act of committing a felony right now. It's called unlawful flight in order to avoid prosecution, and it's a federal violation. Now, do you come along quietly, or do I make a citizen's arrest? Come on, Mr. Tyler. <laughs> Mr. Benedict, the night watchman brought her in. Any charges? The only damage she's doing is to herself. She's in there. Thank you. Thanks. Sam. Oh, Sam. Sam. Sam, Sam. Oh, Sam. Oh. 
$97,000. I made out a receipt for him and a trust agreement whereby you'll act as repository until the final disposition of the court. And, oh, yes, and he fired us. At least that's the last word I've had. Oh, good. And Mrs. Tyler wants us to we can go in as amicus curiae. scared, Samuel? Many, many times. Well, I want to tell you something, brother. I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm scared of what I've done to myself, but most of all, I'm scared of what I've done to Ruth. So you left her alone. You ran away without husband, money, friends, with nothing to sustain her. Oh, no. I left her something. I left her you, Samuel. She's more than half in love with you again. I'm a lawyer, Tyler, not a marriage counselor. What you and Mrs. Tyler do with your lives is your own business. Mine is to see that you get a fair and impartial trial. You're staying here tonight. I am? You are, right here. About Ruth. You think there's any chance that she'll be there with me? Is it important to you? Yeah, somehow it is. Will she be there? I don't have any idea. Sam? I am always early, Bonnie. You know that. What's the early business about today? The same as yours, justice. You know that justice and the strict letter of the law are not always compatible. True, trite, and the most irrelevant thing that I have heard today. If you came here to flog that dead horse, let me tell you that your client is guilty of grand thefts. Not once, not ten times, not fifty, but sixty-eight times. If that's what we're talking about. It is. But let's assume that not one home buyer loses his home through any malfeasance on my client's part and that all tax and mechanics liens are completely satisfied and that Tyler himself is divested of any and all participation in the properties involved. Now, assuming all that, where are you going to find any witnesses eager enough to crucify him? Are you talking about full and complete restitution? I am. Certified checks, Barney, covering any penny. And I understand that there's another $97,000 available as a contingency fund. Tyler still broke the law, Sam. Oh, come off it, will you, Barney? We're talking about justice. Tyler's lost everything he spent 15 years trying to build up. Isn't that punishment enough? So? What are you trying to tell me to do? I'm not trying to tell you to do anything. But you could come up with a no object to my move to dismiss, prosecute on a lesser charge. I'm aware of what actions I'm empowered to take by law. And I'm aware that I can advise my client to plead guilty, plead no low contendere, or fight you all the way on a not guilty and win. The next move's yours, Barney. Give me those. I'll see you in court. The judge will be a few minutes late. How'd you make out with the Ross family? I gave him food for thought. He's digesting it. What about Ruth? Did you talk to her? Not a word. Well, Sam, I suppose I'll be in there all day. Seems likely. Well, it seems quite an imposition to me. You stand to make a quarter of a million dollars, Mr. Small. Any man who stands to make that much money from a short ride in the country deserves to be imposed on. Go on, get in there and be imposed on. Oh, hi, Barney. Sam. Uh, this way, Mr. Tyler. What about him? Isn't he going? Hello, Ruth. I don't know, Sam. I just don't know her. Come on. No, Sam. 
I've, I've never been in a court before. This is just like a divorce court. What don't you know? What I should do. You're here. Stay here. He needs you. Does he? Yes, and you need him. And if you're thinking of leaning on my shoulder again, forget it. Now, all I want is some advice from someone I can trust. You! Oh, no, you don't. You want somebody to tell you that your husband will be devoted to you and to you alone for the rest of your life. And to guarantee you happiness from now on. Well, he is not a guarantee company. Oh, Sam, it isn't that way. It isn't that way at all. What is it, then? Whatever your husband is, he's not going to change. If you love him, you will accept that. If you don't, he could be an archangel, and he wouldn't be good enough for you. I think you're hating him, and he's hating you because of that dead boy in your life. Stop it, Sam! Now you stop it, you hear? And that's something that neither of you had any control over. I'm not gonna let you talk to me this way. You know something? I think you wanted me to bring you in here and tell you to forget him and to marry me. Is that such a bad idea? I think it's a terrible idea. And I don't want to do any such thing. You married him 15 years ago, not me. Now you want to show him that you're worthy of being loved because you think he rejected you. Well, he hasn't and he didn't. Now, why don't you grow up today and be a real woman to the man you really love? Well, now that everyone understands everyone else, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. You know, whatever you decide to do, it's not going to make any difference in that courtroom or to anyone in the world outside. Only to your husband and to you. He's in there alone, Ruth. No one is going to weep for you. Not even you? No one. Not even me. Not even the gulls, huh? Not even the gulls. And a loving, beautiful wife would be there anyway. All right. Shall we attend the trial of the people against Gregory J. Tyler? They are expecting us. Sam. Have, have you ever wanted anyone to cry for you? Many, many times. <laughs> <laughs>